Hey folks, welcome back to Abundant Life Homestead. I'm working through a series of maintenance on my Kubota B7100 tractor and I want to take a minute to stress the importance of maintenance on your radiator. Now these old tractors, these old Japanese tractors, they don't use a water pump system like we're familiar with in most engines. They use a thermo siphon. So the setup looks the same, but there's just nothing forcing your, your coolant through your radiator. So as the engine heats the coolant up, it rises, pushes into the top of the radiator, that pushes anything the radiator has cooled back into the engine. It's effective, but uh, it's not highly efficient. So it's vitally important you keep this clean. You get on forums online, find any, talk to anybody with a B-series tractor, one of their biggest complaints is they probably overheated it several times. And the radiator is often neglected and often the reason. When I bought this tractor over a decade ago, this radiator was clogged. I took the time to clean it out I've only overheated the tractor once. My dyno blew and I didn't know it until I had steam coming out and I'd actually blown a cell in the radiator. So I patched that up. As long as I keep it clean, I haven't had any trouble since. But to keep it clean, every time I work on the tractor, every time I pull the front grill off, heck, every time I mow a field, I get in here, I vacuum it, and then I'll show you a couple other things I use to clean the cells out. Now once you've bought one of these and cleaned out the old radiator or put a new radiator on it, as long as you keep a good screen on it, it's uh, not too difficult to keep it cleaned out. But you can see we still get some crud up in here. We pick up bugs. They come through spaces around the front screen. That's okay. First thing I always do, I vacuum it out with a shop vac. And then I get these cheap little bamboo skewers really great for cleaning the crud out from between these fins and I'm probably more meticulous than most people but there's my tractor spends a lot of time sitting stationary so instead of depending on movement and the fan to pump air through the radiator it depends solely on the fan and I want as much air as I can moving through this through these cooling fins so these cheap little uh, cheap little bamboo skewers will grab out any of the crud and if it's been if it's been thoroughly cleaned you don't normally have to push all the way through these little spots where the crud is is just generally in that first first little fin section quarter inch half inch in at the most I'm going to loosen some of those up and then we're going to hit it with shop back here Don't see a whole lot of them right now. Some in here. A lot of it up in this corner. I had to fix the trim around my uh, screen this year. I noticed when I pulled it off for another video that the, the trim had come apart up in this corner. And it really shows that this whole corner is clogged here. So we're going to get all that out of there. Back will probably get most of what's left and then we'll see. cells here that didn't get pulled out. Just gonna go back through and hit them. And probably 
probably don't have to be as meticulous as I am about your radiator and most people we know aren't but at the same time the more you can get out of here the happier your engine's going to be okay I don't see any more clogged cells but while we're down here, we also don't want to neglect our oil cooler. <coughs> which is this little radiator up here in front that cools our hydraulic oil. Now, I have never done a thorough cleaning of this. Not as much as I... Not give it as much attention as I should. And it's got some spots that look pretty well clogged in it. And the fins are a lot closer together, so my skewer doesn't quite fit in there. But uh, we'll see if we can't open some of this up. big chunk in it. I'm going to try to go through there. Alright, let's see. I don't remember where I stopped here on the bottom side of this row. But... <coughs> now this but I'm going to have to try to straighten out here. I guess I wouldn't have to. I could leave it and the whole thing would be okay. But we can get a little bit of air flowing through that spot where it's been smashed. broke my skewer on the second row here so uh, I'm down to literally my last one of this diameter I'm just going to use it to pick everything out of here and then if I got to go open the airways I can do that after I've been to town and get some more skewers but this will get us any of it that uh, that we can see here on the surface. This will get it any of it out and we'll go from there. straightened a little bit. see a lot of these are clogged through and through That's yeah I'll save the rest of that project for another day but I'm gonna hit it with the vacuum and then uh, 
in a minute I'm going to spray down the engine with the hose so I'll hit these too see what I can, what else I can get out of them <laughs> Again, <clears throat> and we're going to expedite the pro drying process with the leaf blower. <laughs> That just helps push out anything that was left behind by the water. You don't want it to dry out and get caked in there, so try to force every bit of it out that you can. So last thing you need to check when cleaning out your radiator is to make sure your whistle's clean. And your whistle is down your right hand side of the engine just below your lower radiator hose right here so what happens if your engine overheats it blows excess radiator fluid through the through the overflow down to the whistle and it'll scream at you that tube needs to be clear you can either run water through it or you can run air through it or if you're just a mean old hillbilly like me, you can pop the hose off and blow through it and make sure it's clean. Pretty sure the whistle works. Otherwise, make sure your cap's in good shape. It takes a 13 pound cap. Sometimes you can't find 13, 10 works. And keep good radiator fluid in it. 50-50 uh, mix just like any other vehicle. I've heard uh, some people say that a uh, two to one mix of water to antifreeze works better, but I've always put 50-50 in mine, just fine. Well, there you have it, folks, a little B7100 radiator maintenance. Keep it clean, keep it serviced, keep good fluid in it. Promise your tractor will thank you, and don't be like me and neglect your hydraulic cooler while you're there with your radiator I'm still gonna have a little more work to do with that got a lot more to do on the tractor next few days don't have anything incredibly exciting but we are gonna go through all the fluids and filters um, gonna do some electrical work if I can find the right switches I'm gonna rewire my uh, my auxiliary lights I'm gonna remove my horns since they've never worked I'm gonna remove the uh, the cruise control and also in order to get to my hydraulic screens I'm going to have to pull off the subframe for the backhoe. So we have a lot coming and if you want to uh, keep up on any of that make sure you're subscribed. <coughs> I do appreciate your subscriptions, your likes and any comments you have below. And until next time just keep on nourishing your dreams, cultivating your passions and embracing the beauty of God's creation. We'll see you then.